Welcome home, neighbors. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, California, Utah, Michigan, Michigan Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesia, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Lovia, Corbaugh, Kalani Resort, Hilton, Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek, Grand Floridian, Saratoga Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening to And you're listening. You're listening, you're listening to, to my, to my, 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 Hello and welcome to DVC Newscast. This is episode 128. I am Shannon and joining me today, we got Pete. Hello. And Sue. Hi there. Pete and I just got back from Disney World and you actually stayed a little longer. You got there before me and left after me. But by um, one day, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think one day before and then and then one day after. But you had you had a good trip. Had a good trip. Yeah. Got to got to meet Sue. Meet up with Sue. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. know she was going to be there. That's great. And then we met up at Animal Kingdom. Yep. And we we were able to catch up. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was Animal Kingdom, right? For, Animal Kingdom, and bit. it was the first the first extra evening hours at Animal Kingdom. Yes, hmm. that's which right. Which were amazing. Yeah. Which were, I will say, uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that, but those were the best evening hours, extra evening hours that I've attended, and I've attended awesome. at at Magic Kingdom and Epcot. I will say walked on flight of passage. Yeah. You're kidding. Well, we did walked on. We did miles. Everest four times in a row. I mean, wow. and, and never waited. Even when we wanted, we were in the front or the back, front and back, and never waited once. It was amazing. And then I, I was like, done. <laughs> I waited, but I did single rider. So I don't know if it, there was there was about 10 people in the single rider line. So I waited a couple cars, but it was early in the event. But yeah, we got we we went over the event was from seven to nine, and I think we got over to Flight of Passage about eight. And yeah, so we probably passed literally each other. Literally walked on. Literally, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm curious. I think the next one is we're recording this on Wednesday, so I think the next one is tonight. But I, it was great. It was really great. But that's not what we're talking about today. Before <laughs> we get started, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, which this week is Monera Financial. So if you have a contract that maybe you need to refinance, or maybe you are going to be purchasing a resale contract, definitely hit up our friends at Monera Financial and they can help you out. Now, I do want to just do an before we get into our news stories for this week, I do want to just give an update to a news story that we did two weeks ago on our last episode, and that was about the Bluey scavenger hunt at Fort Wilderness. My family and I went as I told you we would, <laughs> and uh -huh. it's not happening. And actually, I will say WDWNT did report that it was it, it, it was all uh, removed. I just missed that because I was already in Walt Disney World. They said it lasted maybe a day or two, and all of a sudden they got an email saying it's not happening and everything disappeared. Uh, no explanation. So I told Pete, I wow. texted Pete when this happened, and yeah. we assumed that they probably didn't have licensing rights. <laughs> yeah, I, I said mm -hmm. Bluey, Bluey flew in his lawyers from Australia. Yeah, with a from Australia. <laughs> order. Yeah, very unfortunate. We yeah. did make the most of it. We had to go and visit a community hall to to appease Ryder because he was looking so forward to that. But we did make the most <laughs> of our day. But just so if anybody did listen to that episode, hopefully you're listening to this episode too. And you don't go to Fort Wilderness to do the Bluey scavenger hunt. So with that, we'll go ahead and yeah. start with our first story. So our first story is, it's actually about a week old. The proposed maintenance fees came out last uh, on November 6th, last week. Actually, it's more than a week old. And unfortunately, Shannon and I were both in Disney World. And, you know, the, we weren't able to record an episode immediately. So we're talking about it now. But they release the dues adjustments every year. The dues go up for resorts. I mean, it's something anyone that's been a member for any length of time realizes. And we do have, you know, it's out there on the internet, but we do have in our show notes, we have a list of all the dues for all the resorts. We just wanted to hit a couple of highlights. A couple of the resorts had very small increases, particularly Boardwalk. And this made me very happy only had a 1.64% increase uh, in the dues, which is really on the low side. So awesome. And also, if you were an own owner at Boulder Ridge or Copper Creek, those two went up about the same amount. But in this particular case, it was 1.97% and 2.19% versus what their actual rates are. So Boulder Ridge's 
rate is a little higher so that's why the percentage is lower but they both went up by about the same same number of pennies pretty low rises it's speculated at least with the boardwalk refurb and it may also have affected the boulder ridge copper creek one as well that maybe there were reduced operating costs for next year because they overestimated the 2023 operating costs because of the construction that was being done like half of the boardwalk's been closed since september so you know it's maybe the costs have been down so therefore when they factored that in for 2024 that that meant it was a little bit lower on the high end old key west had the highest percentage Mine. increase if you're an old key <laughs> west owner yeah 6.25 yeah. percent and that was that was definitely the worst most of the other ones were in the three to five percent range at walt disney world the ones outside of walt disney world were generally the largest with the smallest one being the new disneyland hotel which increased by 5.19 percent which i think we were all a little surprised at because that just came out so you would have thought they would have had it closer so you know it's a little bit of a surprise usually new resorts the first few years the increase is kind of on the lower side and alani and vero had the the highest percentage increases those were i think uh in the seven percent range something like that a couple other comments the lowest dues now in the system remain at the grand floridian and bay lake tower uh grand floridian is seven dollars and 57 cents per point and bay lake tower 759 so those are those are still the lowest two they were before as well and you know what i was looking at comparisons over the last few years and it was interesting to see eight years ago old key west was one of the lowest on mm-hmm. all disney world property but they've actually had eight straight years of five percent plus increases at that resort and it is now the highest of the walt disney world resorts at nine dollars and 89 cents per point so it looks like they're going to be the first one on property probably to hit ten dollars a point next year i would guess that that's pretty likely to happen of course the two highest remain hilton head and vero at 1131 for hilton head and vero is 1386 yep. for non-subsidized so i mean realizing that's almost double the, what the lowest ones are right <laughs> if you think about 750 versus 14 dollars it's just a reminder that the low buy-ins for these resorts don't necessarily make up for the expense of the annual dues. You got to, you got to think about all those things. If anyone is interested in the history of the dues, I'm going to do a quick plug for dvchelp.com. If you look under our facts, there is a page on maintenance fees and dues, and it will actually show you the history of the dues for every single resort historical average of all resorts over all time is around four percent but honestly the last like seven eight years it's closer to five percent so if you're getting an increase less than five percent you're doing pretty well and certainly less than four percent is a a good increase if it's more than five percent then you're you're getting hit a little bit hard but so most of them were not too bad especially considering there was a new contract this year and you know pay rates are going up I don't know any comments from the two of you i i mean I, I i can't complain because two of my resorts animal kingdom was only three percent boardwalk of course was the lowest so i'm pretty happy about that you know i think saratoga springs was always like the best value because it they talked about the dues and i remember that was when i bought in which was god i guess seven years ago almost yeah. and you know copper creek is now lower than saratoga So I, I, you know, I'm kind of looking, Grand Floridian is lower than Saratoga. Bay Lake Tower, I mean, and I know when Bay Lake Tower went on sale, it was, it was almost, it was a bargain. I think for me, it's, I'm, I'm happy at three and a half percent for Saratoga. I don't even look at this, to be honest. It's just send me what I'm paying and everything else goes up. So I pay monthly and everything else goes up. So I just kind of, I just have automatic debit and it comes out of my account and I don't want to think about it, but I'm glad it's not 6%. Yeah. And Saratoga yeah. is still on the low end. You know, it again, is. It it is. my point with Old Key West is like, you don't want to just look at I'm the lowest and that's why I'm going to buy that resort, you know, because right. it does change over time. And yet, as you said, Saratoga at one point was, I think they were the lowest or the second lowest at one point. Right. And yeah, so they've gone up. But I mean, honestly, you know, you're talking 50 cents more than the right. lowest 
right? So you're so if you're talking about if you have 200 points, you're talking about a hundred dollars a year or more you're paying for your Saratoga points. So you also have to consider like how much you're paying per night in points because right. you know if you're at the Grand Floridian, yes, the the cost per point is lower, but I might have to pay 20, 25 percent more points for the same room. Right. So it's not actually cheaper. It's just that, you know, there's there's more points per room there. So there's other factors as well. But well, for sure. with, with the old Key West and I own old Key West and old Key West is 51 cents more per point right now, which really isn't bad. And when it went up six percent, six point something percent, you have to keep in mind that Disney typically raises their hotel rates, their rack rates all the way up to 12% a year, anywhere from 10 to 12% a year. We're still falling lower. As far as Vero and Hilton Head go, what people need to keep in mind is the reason why the dues go up. They cost more there. They're near the salt water, yep. so maintenance is higher. With Vero, it is in one of the most expensive towns in Florida. It's got the highest number of retired CEOs living there. It's a very expensive <laughs> tax-based town. And on top of it, you've got your hurricane insurance and your insurance mm -hmm. is on the property. So that's high. So you've got the upkeep, which is high, the taxes, which are high, the insurance, which is high. They're going to go up. It's just like anybody else owning a beach property right now. I did own a Vero Beach, recently sold it only because I don't use it, but I used to use it and I owned it specifically to be able to get a room in the inn, oceanfront mm -hmm. room in the inn during spring break. And I needed that 11-month booking window. So for people who really want either Hilton Head or Vero to stay there, they want that 11-month booking window so they can do summer vacations or spring break vacations, you really do need to own there. And so it's to me, it really wasn't a bad payoff in paying the extra dues on it because the points there were also pretty low to stay. Yeah. And that, that's true too, is, I mean, we, we stayed there the one time we stayed at Vero in November, it was really cheap point points mm -hmm. per night too. So you, again, you have to factor that in too for your, for what your costs are is how much you're paying for a night stay. So Riviera, Grand Floridian, Poly, more points per night. Therefore, even if your dues are lower, lower, you're not really getting a bargain per se because you're paying your it's costing you for a studio it's costing you 25 points a night instead of 20 points a night there's a lot of factors right and if you were if, for example if you were past your break even point which a lot of us are mm -hmm. if you owned vero beach and it's up to what $13.86 a point but you can stay in a room ocean view room in the inn at 10 points a night on some of the nights. Yeah. So 10 times that means that you paid $138 for the night in that room. There's yep. no way you would ever be able to get it for that. No, and I, I look at that a lot with my points because my per night costs have gone up over, you know, I've been an owner now for almost 10 years and my per night costs, of course, have gone up. But then I still look at what I'm paying and right. what it costs to stay forget even Disney, what it costs to stay in a hotel nowadays. If you want to stay in a decent hotel, you're paying $150 to $200 a night in many places. And in, again, beachfront, we recently went down to New York City and we couldn't even stay in New York City for under like $400 a night. Right. So we ended up staying in New Jersey and it was still two, $225 or something like that. Whereas... I initially was paying like $125 a night for a room. Now it's more like $175 a night at Disney. It's still super cheap compared to most other places and certainly compared to what rack rates are for the deluxe resorts. And even it's comparable to, to the values now. Right. Right. <laughs> and know? on top of it, look at the kind of room you're getting for that price. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anyways, that's probably enough talk of dues, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's been keeping people busy with wanting to buy and sell. So that's always a yeah, good thing. I, I got to imagine, and you can comment on this, Sue. I would imagine every year when the dues come out, there's some people that go, I'm selling. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And most of them were on the fence. Um, they right, haven't yeah. used it in a while or their grandkids don't want to go there any longer, but they held on to it. And then when they see the dues, they're ready. 
So this is going to be, this is our busy time. We're coming into our busy time of year for sales. So the next story is that the standard Disney collection rules are going to apply for the non-DVC Disneyland stays. Um, so what this means is that there's a minor change to the Disney collection. The Disney collection, remember, is all of the Disney hotels that are not DVC. So they're not DVC rooms, they're actual Disney hotel rooms. For most days, using points to stay at a non-DVC Disney resort known by DVC as the Disney Collection, there's normally a $95 transfer fee and a rule that states that members cannot make a reservation and stay, and complete that stay within the last four months of their use here. Reason being is that if you are going to stay in one of the hotel rooms, they need, Disney needs enough time to rent out your points to be able to get the money to be able to pay for that hotel stay. You can use it and you can stay in the last four months of your use here. It just means that you have to make that reservation before the last four months. So if you're six months, seven months, five months out, and you'd want to stay at, say, the Grand Californian Hotel, you can pay $95 for a transfer fee and you can make the reservation and stay there within your last four months of the use year. So this is something that they're they're coming up with. Previously, these two requirements were waived for the three Disneyland resort hotels because of how small the Grand Floridian DVC property was, having only 50 rooms. However, the fee and restrictions have been put in place at Disneyland resort hotels thanks to the opening of the villas at the Disneyland Hotel. So now that they've got more inventory available, they're going back to instituting these rules. Yeah, and it seems fair. Mm -hmm. We went from 50 rooms to 400 plus rooms. Right. So that that's a pretty reasonable inventory. And it's not all that brutal of restriction, right? $95. Right. I've looked at the Disney collection. Generally, it's a pretty expensive way to go in terms of what you pay per night at these hotels if you use your points. It is. It's a lot more points to stay yeah. by using your points there. And, you know, it's, again, what I would do, and I've done this in the past, is I've just rented out my points and paid exactly. cash because it took less points to rent out than it would have to use yep. the Disney collection. Yeah, and you hear that all the time from us resale members. Yeah, Just rent just rent out the points, Yep, take the money, and same thing with the, the Disney Cruises, the ABD, if you look at how much it costs you, just rent out your points, take the cash, and you can do it for a lot lot less. Or look at the swap so. program that we have uh, through World of DVC. Right. Oh, that's right. The, sure. the cruises are really, really inexpensive when you look at it. With The number of points is basically half. Yeah. And they guarantee it. So you get onto the cruise. You don't have to worry about somebody renting your points and can you make it. They make the reservation right then and there for you. Yeah, so you can check that out at the DVC resale market. Um, call Sue or one of the other <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of the other representatives over there. We'd be sure. glad to help. We, we got another Disneyland. A lot of story Disneyland, here. a yep. lot of Disneyland yeah. stories. So there's going to be a holiday event planned for the villas at Disneyland Hotel. A new holiday event is planned for owners at the villas at Disneyland Hotel on November 29th and December 5th. Qualifying members can visit the Sleeping Beauty Pavilion on the second floor of the Disneyland Hotel for unique gathering. Disney characters will be present for photos and members can collect a special treat for attending. The hours are going to be 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific time on both dates. Advanced registration is not required. However, the line may close early if capacity limits have been reached. 2 to 4 and it's what a Wednesday and a Tuesday? So I guess they're, you know, they're not targeting yeah. the any local guests, right? Or any local owners. Right. They're targeting people that might be staying there. And that's that's an odd time too, because if you're visiting, I guess maybe if you're visiting, it's easier there because if you're visiting the parks, you can just walk over. It's not like Disney World. It also says owners at the Villas Disneyland Hotel. It doesn't yeah, it's not EVC members. That's right. right. So, yeah, so it's, it's, qu it's quite possible if you just, if you own at Saratoga, but you happen to be in California, you know, which I'm sure a lot of 
there's I'm sure there's a lot of members in California that aren't owners yet at the Disneyland mm -hmm. Hotel. Right. They wouldn't be able to attend. So it's mostly intended for the people that are staying exactly. there those right. days. Exactly. But it sounds like it might be similar to what they did for Halloween at the yep. boardwalk. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Where it's yep. probably going to be a couple character meets and they might give out some snacks and things like that. Yeah. We attended that um, last year and it was great. It was a long line, but it was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a long line, but even that it was like, what, like 40 minutes or something like that. Half yeah, hour. it was 40 minutes. The characters were unique. Now, I wish they had had photo pass photographers. That was the only yeah. downside. But I mean, we got free popcorn. That was good. Yeah. That and I got a free popcorn bucket. So that was cool. Sue, did you end up going this year to the one at to that same one that they had at the boardwalk? No, I wasn't able to make it. Okay, I tried. I didn't hear anything about this year's if it was the same yeah. thing or different, like it was different characters or anything like that. Nice event. Yeah. It's a nice, yeah. I mean, it's, it's something, you know, it's something free then, you know, it's, it doesn't affect me, but it's still nice that it's going to be offered for those, for those owners. Yep. yep. And then awesome. one other story on the uh, West coast. Yes. The new DVC welcome center is going to open at Disneyland again, West coast, the Walt Disney Imagineering blue sky cellar in Disney California Adventure will become a Disney Vacation Club Welcome Home Center. Disneyland Resort had announced more information is going to be announced at a later time. There's not a lot of details. As you recall, Blue Sky Cellar first opened in the park's Pacific Wharf area, which is now San Francisco Square, in 2008 as a replacement for Seasons of the Vine. On and off in the next several years, Blue Sky Center would feature exhibits about upcoming lands and attractions like the Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, Cars Land, and lastly, Pixar Pier. Blue Sky Cellar has not been used since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020. So they're reopening it. It's going to be a welcome center for DVC Vacation Club members, which will really be kind of neat. Yeah, what do you think that means, Sue? Is, is that just like similar to like the booths that are in the park where they're going to be selling kind of selling DVC or do you think it's going to be a little more than that and be like a place where you can stop and get a drink? Yeah, I think it's going to be more like the lounge that's in Epcot along those lines for DVC members. So a place where people can come in, sit down for a while, talk to people if they're interested in adding on, they can always connect them to a sales guide, but a place to welcome the members and let the members have a, a beverage or a snack and get to meet each other. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell. Cause right. They have a lounge that they put into Disneyland, right? I forget what they're called the spaceport lounge or something like that, right. which is a true lounge. Right. This they're just calling a welcome center. I feel like there won't necessarily be as much of a place that you would go in and sit down and stay for a while. The one in Disneyland, you can even like bring your food in from a quick service right. place and sit there and eat and everything like that. I don't think it's going to be that. I don't think it's going to be that big, but I think it's yeah. still going to be a space. People might be able to get some charging stations or. Right. I don't see it as just a standalone little kiosk. I see it more of, you know, welcoming them in that park because they have something over in, Dis in the Disneyland side. This would be in the California Adventure side. Yeah, I keep thinking Welcome Home Center reminds me of what's at Saratoga. Right. Right, where it's kind of a sales office, but also a, a place that you can come in and, and you know, talk to guides and, right. and everything like that. I think it'll be slightly less lounge oriented, but still still be able to come in and, and maybe get a drink or something like that for sure. Okay. interesting what do you what do you think shannon Are, any of these things you're excited to get out to california when's your, when's your next trip to california oh I have, we have no plans i mean no i think we're trying yeah. to get I, I love i mean i love disneyland i think we really want to get to alani and then yeah. also to alaska yeah. so riders at an age where i think that we could do an alaskan cruise in the mm -hmm. summer and he would enjoy it so i think that's probably a goal before getting back to disneyland if I win the lottery, maybe I'll just do all three, right? All at yeah. once. Um, but <laughs> unless that happens, I think those other two. I mean, Ryder asks us all the time, but right now, no plans. So. Well, Shannon, one thing to keep in mind, when we went out to Alani, we flew to LAX and we stayed over at Disneyland for two nights. 
Mm-hmm. So we did spend one whole day in the in the park, and it was to get used to the time. the time. Yep. And then we also got a less expensive flight going from California to Hawaii. So oh, we okay. found that the flights from here, from Florida to Hawaii, were more expensive than if we did it. We did Southwest out to LAX. Yeah. And then we took Hawaiian Airlines. Same thing on the way back. We took Hawaiian Airlines back to LAX, stayed for a night, and then we flew home with Southwest. Yeah, we we did that with Australia, and it was the same thing. It was a lot cheaper to book a a flight with the U.S. airline. And then I think we flew Qantas from LAX to Sydney, and it was a lot cheaper than it would have been had we just booked all the way. And, and also I was right. not going to spend 24 hours on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so who knows, you might be going back to Disneyland. Yeah. Just make a stop. It's a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, that's definitely something we would probably do. Cause yeah. I, I have heard that, especially for Alani. So it's hard to get excited about something that, you know, you're not probably not going to experience, but hopefully our listeners will. And that's, that's yeah. what matters, right? Yeah. And we hope that we'll get Gina or Vicky to, get let us know what these places are like i mean i don't know about the the holiday event but at least the welcome center when that opens we don't have a date for that yet though right when it's going to be open no they didn't announce it yet that is it there's no news in walt disney world we are we going to be recording a bonus episode regarding jollywood nights we're actually going to be recording right after this so i think that one will probably go up before this news but they're probably going to go up very close if you listen to this and we will be doing a bonus episode it's not really news related yeah shannon myself and then also gene is going to come in we all did the first jollywood nights we all had independent experiences, even though I was texting both of them yep. all night. We never <laughs> were able to overlap. <laughs> yep. But I think we also all had somewhat similar experiences. So I yep. Think, I think this will be interesting. Yep. So if you're, listening. If, if you're listening live, we'll be we'll be coming back on in about 15 minutes. Yeah. No news unless you go on Twitter and want to learn about Jollywood Nights, then you can do that. But no news on the on the uh, East Coast, but hopefully there'll be some in the next few weeks. We've got, obviously, we talked about Jollywood Nights has started. The Christmas party started last week as well. Mm-hmm. And I have heard good things about that. And yeah, it's, I, I got to see some of the decorations. They were starting to put some of the decorations. And I was at... Magic Kingdom, the night of the first night of the Frozen, the new Frozen projections. We missed the cash or so because it wasn't announced, but which was fine. Yeah, I love the projections. I know a lot of people really miss the lights, but I thought the projections in person are absolutely stunning. And I don't miss the time that it took to cover the castle to put on yeah, the lights because right, it that right. took that took weeks if not months to do months, right yeah it did take months yeah it was crane city it was crane yeah. city i think that that's a trade-off i i'd rather have the projections than than have that taken away because i know friends that would go during that time when it was a crane and that's like their one trip every right. three years and that's their picture was with a crane and i thought the projections were beautiful i think they're beautiful so i'm um, looking forward to it friday night i go to mickey's very merry Ooh, fun. Okay, well, let us know how it is. Will do. Have some hot chocolate for me. Okay, maybe a (laughs) cookie or two. (laughs) Well, I can't have the cookie, so you're going to eat all the cookies. (laughs) But I did have, I will say, you know what I had for the first time? Christy from DCL Podcast, Pack Your Pixie Dust. She is also celiac. And she had told me that I need to try the the churros at Nomad Lounge in Animal Kingdom because they're gluten-free. Hmm. And I finally did. And man, she was right. They're amazing. (laughs) They were. My husband's like, these aren't gluten-free. And I'm like, they're gluten-free. And he's like, you can't eat these. I'm like, yeah, they're gluten-free. He had to ask the waitress because he didn't believe me because he thought. And churros is like, you can buy them on the street corner here in in Miami. Hmm. He knows churros. Right. And he could not believe how good they were. So thank you very much, Christy from DCL Podcast. She did not steer me wrong. So Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, before we go, we want to thank our three sponsors, DVC Resale Market, DVC Rental Store, and Monera Financial for their continued support of the My DVC Points platform. And I will say, see you real soon, everyone. Yeah, in 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. I'll be listening.
Ladies and gentlemen, please watch your head and step as you exit, and take small children by the hand. Aw, oh, cheer up, Dad. You know I'll come back. What DVC? My DVC Points is an unofficial Disney-inspired podcast created by fans of Disney Vacation Club. The thoughts expressed in this podcast are personal opinions and personal experiences. My DVC Points is not affiliated with Disney Vacation Club, the Walt Disney Companies, or any subsidiaries. We encourage listeners to contact their DVC guide or member services for official DVC policies.